What is going on, New York Giant fans? Welcome back to another Roster Bubble Series video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when a live stream pops or a video drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Also, please share out. Also, subscribe to NYY News TV. Me and Luca do the Twin Build podcast every Wednesday on that channel and also. Five star on Apple Podcasts, both for Twin Bill and the Big Blue in the Bronx podcast. So appreciate you guys. Obviously, that podcast will be going when football season arrives, uh, which will be a very interesting time. And then we'll talk about camp battles and stuff like that. With that being said, another roster bubble series video. So I'll explain and then we'll go right into it. Uh, I talk about players who are on the roster bubble who have a chance of being cut, have a chance of being on the practice squad, have a chance at being on the 53-man roster, how they can win, how they can lose, their competition, and also their background. And then last but not least, well, actually, yeah, well, yeah, actually last. Uh, I, I, I thought the quote didn't make sense for a second, but anyway, um, you'll, you'll get those in a video. Last is a prediction on whether the player will make the roster or not. So in this one, it is going to be Maurice Kennedy. Maurice Kennedy. Now, he has been around for a while now. Maurice Kennedy has been around for a while. He's been in the league since 2016 when he was drafted by the Ravens out of the University of Virginia. Um, he was a six-round pick. And he was in Martindale's system for a long time. I think that's worth noting. And that could definitely play a role into whether he's here or not. Uh, with that being said, let's talk about some background on him. Once again, I talked about his draft status. He's only started four games in his NFL career. So take that with the 40 games he's played in. He opted out in 2020. I thought I would put that in as well because that's context. But with that being said... That can be due to two things, and both have played a role. The fact that he's a backup and the fact that he is a bit of an injury-prone quarterback. So take that with you know your information and your research that you do on Maurice Kennedy, whether it's from this video or another video, or just another piece of content, whether it's a video or an article. I don't know. But in 2016, he only had two tackles, didn't play a ton. In 2017, he had 27 tackles. He only started one game that season, played in eight of them. In 2018, with the Ravens, he had five tackles, played in seven games. In 2019, he split between teams. He had two starts for the New York Jets in eight games, and he also had five games played for the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, and he had one start there. He had one interception with the Ravens that season. He also had three pass deflections, a forced fumble, 21 tackles, and then 25 tackles with the Jets and a tackle for a loss. 2020, he did not play with the Dallas Cowboys. And in 2021, he played eight games with the Cowboys, total of six tackles. And then, of course, the New York Giants signed him. Uh, when we talk about the... Uh, snaps in terms of snap percentage on defense and stuff like that for a good portion of his career it's been in about the 40s I would say so he played 59% of the defensive snaps in 2017 his rookie year he didn't play any defensive snaps then in 2018 he played 2% of the defensive snaps with the Jets he played 46% of the defensive snaps and before that with the Ravens in 2019 with the five games he played 51% of the defensive snaps Nothing in 2020. In 2021, he played 14% of the defensive snaps and a lot on special teams there. So that's obviously worth noting that basically you look at four players on the roster. You look at a Dory, you look at a guy like Aaron Robinson, you look at Cordell, and you also look at a guy like Darnay Holmes. Those are locks for the roster. Maybe Darnay isn't to some people, but other than that, you got to look for special teamers. You got to look for reserve players. Got to look for guys that are going to come in and they'll be reliable. And Kennedy can be one of those guys. So in terms of Kennedy coverage stats, he gave up two completions on two targets in 2018 in seven games, which accounted for 116.7 passer rating. 
In 2019, with the Baltimore Ravens, he gave up a completion percentage of 63.3, 187 yards, and a 66.9 passer rating to go along with 21 tackles. And then with the Jets, he gave up a completion percentage of 63.2, 151 yards, 87.8 passer rating, no touchdowns, so that's good for him on the stat sheet. And then with the Dallas Cowboys, he gave up one touchdown this past year, four completions on four targets. And then a passer rating of 158.3. Let's take a look at his competition. It is Jaron Williams, Radarius Williams, Zion Gilbert, an undrafted free agent, Darren Evans, undrafted free agent out of LSU, Khalil Dorsey. Uh, those two actually did not interact on the Baltimore Ravens, which was surprising, but Khalil Dorsey signed with the Ravens in 2020. And then Michael Jacquet, the former Jacksonville Jaguar and the former Philadelphia Eagle. Uh, so something, and I'll, I'll talk about uh, the win and the loss next in terms of how we can win, how we can lose the spot on the roster. I'll talk about this. This, and this goes for many positions. This DB room is very inexperienced. Adoree Jackson, obviously, you take into account that he's a veteran. Aaron Robinson only played a handful of games last year. Started, I believe, two or three, maybe four. I think that's it. Uh, Darnay Holmes, he's played two seasons, and last year he was injured a little bit towards the end of the season. Then you take a look at Cordell Flott, who's coming in as a rookie. What, what's the expectation there? Is he going to start out of the slot? Is he going to start on the outside? Where are they going to place him? So a lot of inexperience there. You take a look at Jaron Williams, who started two games last year for a DB room that was roughed up towards the end of the season. Radarius Williams coming off of a torn ACL. Didn't start a game, but played five games last year before the injury. Zion Gilbert, Darren Evans, undrafted free agents. Michael Jacquet didn't play a ton with Jacksonville last year and Philly the, Philly the uh, year before. And then Khalil Dorsey played a little bit with Baltimore in 2020 and then was injured last year. So once again, a lot of inexperience, a lot of inconsistent experience as well. Um, so he probably is the most or maybe even the second most experienced corner in terms of games played uh in terms of how can he win the position he's got to stay healthy he's had his fair share of injuries over the course of his career which reflects on starts snap percentage and the games played he has to stay healthy he has to offer versatility as well he can play in the slot and he can also play on the outside so familiarity with martindale's defense and just being flexible well guess what that would probably help him positively make his way onto the roster Lay off the penalties. He is known to be grabby when receivers go to the break point in the route. He is known to be grabby at that point and make plays as well. He's going to be matching up against guys, uh, you know, twos and threes. He's probably not going to be with the ones unless a lot of the corners get injured. He's going to be with the twos and threes. No matter where you're stashed, make plays. That's how you're going to rise up the depth chart. Then how can he lose? Stay on the sidelines. That's how he's going to lose. Stay on the sidelines, stay injured, you know, get injured. And I'm not saying to get injured, but if he gets injured, he's not going to win the position. Uh, we've seen guys in the past, uh, for example, S Scott Simonson in 2019, he got injured against the Patriots. Well, he was cut with an injury settlement later on because he was placed on IR. And that's normally how it goes. If you get injured in the preseason and, you know, you go on IR, you're either going to be kept there for the entire season, or you're going to be released with an injury settlement. Uh, struggle against the twos and threes. Make the best of your opportunities, but if you don't, how are you going to make the roster? How are you going to make the best of your opportunities when it comes to the actual games? And commit penalties. Uh, if he commits penalties and costs other teammates the possible opportunities to make a roster spot, whether it's offense, defense, or special teams, coaches will look at the big picture and say, look, because you screwed up, and they won't say this to them, or some hard-ass coaches might, but you screwed up, which means that other players on your team did not get an opportunity or did not make as much of their opportunity because of your screw-up, so we're going to cut you. That might happen, and not just Kennedy, but a lot of other players. Remember, it's going to go from 80 to 53. They cut uh, 10 players within the first two weeks of the preseason. Uh, but my prediction, he actually makes the roster. I think his experience will come in handy, his experience with Don Martindale's defense. And just, 
I think he's going to be a helping hand towards the inexperience, and I'm going to use that a lot, towards the youth of this secondary. Overall, the cornerback core, I mean, I don't think he's played safety, but special teams, cornerback, versatility, being familiar with Don Martindale's defense, I don't think he'll do that bad in the preseason. I feel like he might shine against the ones, the twos, and the threes, depending on the vanilla type offense and defense, different, you know, uh, coordinators run and i'm actually enticed to see i'll have to look at past ravens games but I'd actually be enticed to see whether don martindale runs his full blitz scheme i mean a lot of people in the nfl already know listen this is what martindale does so maybe he runs in the preseason maybe he doesn't i don't know but my prediction is that maurice kennedy makes the roster and i think he's going to make the roster with about five six other different corners because don martindale likes his corners he likes his man corners and also, as well, you know, he likes his linebackers, but to the point here, he likes his corners. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications so you know when the live stream pops or your drops. Appreciate y'all coming back. Check out some more videos in the series. Peace out. See you later. Stay cool.